yeah, now it's on. So welcome for this new infrastructure meeting. Um, so yeah, the, the last week has been quite busy. Um, so the first topic that we that I would like to, to cover is the automating uh, Jenkins releases. So uh, thanks everybody for the help uh, on this last week. Um, so basically, we did a great achievement. It was a two years long project um, to switch from KK Basement to um, the Jenkins infrastructure uh, in order to release the Jenkins um, version. Um, so yeah, it was at least it was a bit painful, but I mean, I guess it just means that we have to do it more often. Um, so okay. we had a first release last Thursday. We did a second one yesterday, which was um, I mean, bad, which was way better. Um, so right now we are still focusing on on weekly releases. Um, we now have to to start preparing the stable and the security one. I think for the next release we have to better work on the communication, uh, especially regarding the G, the, the key. Uh, that change for the Debian and repositories and for the Red Hat and NCOs repository. But yeah, I don't know if you have anything that you want to bring um, on this topic right now. I don't. I don't think it's important to to cover all the different issues because we have we we had a lot and we fixed a lot um, thing that we did not plan. But um, yeah, I'm still looking for the Red Hat public key. So just if you can send it to me separately no need to do it now olivier i just need I, to be sure i sent it got... to you on, I, on irsa oh you did good okay so i can grab it from there then thanks tim uh, does that mean i mean is it not public is it not uh, available on the website is it something that it you is. have to add it okay. is there I, I, okay I so, we so to get that, it from the link. that key has been updated then the the old key is gone mm -hmm. replaced by the new key yeah That's... you can't install the old versions because the old key's gone yeah, that worries me. Okay, so have we broken LTS by that? Um, no, no so, it's a folder, so, so yeah, yeah. So that, that I think that's a good point. Uh, basically, what happened here is that we changed we changed the key for um, the new releases, and if we want to use the old keys, they are still available, but in the different <laughs> repositories like uh, Debian stable, Red Hat stable, whatever. And I think it's important to to have a specific backup. So that I mean, you raise a good point here. Uh, yeah, we need We're we need to be able it. to. Yeah, we need to be aware. We need to be able to provide um, old keys. <laughs> um, Yeah, so you'll still be able to get it, Mark, if you get it from the LTS folder. Um, but we should copy it to another copy it into the main folder, but just with a different name. Great. Yeah, maybe maybe we can use let's say the the the, um, the, um, the GPG key name directly in the file name, so we know which key is. Uh, the, I mean, for what uh, it's used. So yeah. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Has joined us. Who joined us? Oh, okay. um, regarding regarding the stable and the security uh, version, the main thing that need to be changed is obviously where we are pushing um, the artifacts. So for the stable, um, for the stable, we just have to to fetch Jenkins from a specific branch. What I'm still not not sure yet is, um, do we just use the same Jenkins instance like release.ci the Jenkins that I own? Do we use a different job for stable, for security, for weekly? Um, yeah, th those need to be th th those need to be defined at the moment. Another option would also to have to define a specific branch for the different release line. So we do not provide that option by parameter. But yeah, this is something that we have to 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 think before switching to the stable and to the security uh, release line. But for now, we still rely on Kazuke uh, for releasing those versions. That's going to be quite uh, painful because of um, the keys changing. Yeah. So especially for the especially for the stable, um, especially for stable, and I'm not sure. Mark, do you have an idea when will be the next stable uh, release? Yeah, Wednesday. On Wednesday, right. so we will Isn't be two 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 twenty two dot two due out tomorrow. I thought that we were. I'll have to double check, Olivier, but. Okay. See, I don't understand why that would be an issue because it's, the way it's yeah, structured why, why, now, the, yeah. the old key is still in the stable directory structure. And because the old key is still in the stable directory structure, Kosuke's builds for stable will still behave exactly as they should. Yes, that's that's yeah. so it, it won't be it won't be an issue for this week. Okay, it's just that well, once once we decide to switch to the new new release process for a stable release, then we will have to 
to maybe either modify the Jenkins file. I mean, we have to bring some specific configuration for the um, for the stable. Okay. Really. All right. But yeah, I think I think that um, we. I'm not sure what would be the best way to communicate. Uh, I don't know if we have to write a blog post, but I mean, we have to be better at communicating the fact that we are changing the key um, for the stable release. Yeah, so certainly we'll need to go into the, when we do the stable release change, we'll put it into the upgrade guide for that version of the stable release. We should blog it, agreed wholeheartedly. We should probably tweet about it, every other channel. And then we should also put on our armor for the, the inflamed users who submit bug reports having read none of them. Okay. I mean, I think the big thing will just be to, to get it up on the package.jenkins.io website as well. So I think right. a lot of users were confused that it wasn't up on that because the website publishing wasn't working right. Yep. But yeah, I think Twitter plus the website would be the main avenues plus cover off other ones. Okay. So we have to prepare for this. Um, I think it's, I, mean, we, I don't think we have anything that we have to discuss about the automating Jenkins releases, do we? Well, so you had mentioned LTS first and then security. I was prone to go the other direction, but I guess one is not without the other, right? If we do a security release, it has to be both LTS and weekly. And so, so, so I think I, I mean, uh, I think the, the reason why I first mentioned LTS is because it seems easier to me. Uh, the, so, but yeah, you, you're totally right that we need to first be able to, to trigger a security release. Uh, and then switch to the LTS. The reason why, um, so the, the requirements asked by Daniel for the security releases. So you want to be able to, to, to trigger release and push that release on a specific Maven repository and that a specific Maven repository change for each uh, specific security issue. So that only the security team and the people who reported the security issue can work on this. Um, so this is a strong requirement uh, by Daniel. And so, yeah, we need to be able to provide a dynamic way to, to specify which Maven repository we want to, to, I mean, where we want to push on the release. And that's why, right. but yeah, I, I don't so, think yeah, it's rocket science, it's just like the process is not yeah. the same. But we can't really release a weekly security fix until it's the, until that's done, I assume, because we can't really ch change the key back. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, um, so otherwise the next uh, topic that I just want to briefly mention is that um, the, the issue, I don't know if you, I didn't have the time to, to really spend uh, a lot of time on Seattle Jenkins.io, but I guess we still have the issues with Amazon instances uh, being disconnected. Um, from, I don't know if we have any ideas how to solve this now. Um, I think we had talked about um, it's possibly because they are so disconnected from the master. Okay. Um, that I think we had a discussion about that on IRC at one point, um, just talking about uh, moving the master to AWS at some point. Um, somebody talking? Yes, can you not hear me? I can hear you just fine. I suspect okay. you just got your family in the background. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we do. There are seven, eight of us, nine of us here. So Exactly. Um, you, you just got a family. It's okay. Um, so I don't know if that's something we want to look at. Or Mark, are you able away. to hear Alex? I can. Yes, it's just it's just the background noise. Alex has a family behind him. Oh, that's weird because I can't hear him at all. Oh, I I, everybody else. Keep going, Alex. Um, so we at some point I don't know if it's our plan to move completely away from <laughs> Azure or or what, but I don't know if that would solve the problem moving the master over AWS or not. Um, that could that could that could solve it, and I think it would be either 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 we deploy a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon, and then we can easily redeploy CI to Jenkins.io. So Tim Jacob already work on a shard, so we could deploy CI to Jenkins.io directly on Kubernetes. Um, so that would be. That would I know. Be I know other people are seeing similar issues. I hang out in the Gitter channel for the EC2 plugin. And other okay. people are, are commenting that they have the same issues, and I haven't seen or seen any resolution from anyone on, on the issue. So it seems like it's a fairly common problem. Um, so I don't know if the EC2 plugin people are working on it or not. Yeah, so that, 
that's consistent with what Oleg Nenashev had suggested, is he'd had similar unreliable experiences with the EC2 <clears throat> plug-in, independent of the network network distance between the Azure cloud and yeah. the AWS cloud. I am looking at the ECS stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't think that could replace all of our uh, agents, um, just because there are some that require like, <coughs> like Docker and Docker, and or it would be Docker and Docker, which is has its own pitfalls and stuff like that. But it may be able to at least give us um, the normal plugin builds a little bit more stable and things like that. So that's something I've been looking into. We could possibly do Docker and Docker on a dedicated CI cluster any, anyway. Yeah, on, I've, on just seen some, I've just seen some pitfalls with Docker and Docker. And you can't do that with Windows very easily. Um, right. You can on Azure. You might be able to on AWS a little bit better. But on Azure, they have issues running Docker and Docker on Windows. So that doesn't necessarily give us Windows builds. Okay. This, yeah. But in, in, in your, in, I can because, hear Alex now. Sorry about that. It's something that's okay. my system. No, I mean, the sound was weird for us as well. Um, I'm just wondering if we are not the only one to have that specific issues with SC2, maybe what would be, I mean, maybe we could try to identify how we can improve the plugin. I mean, who would be the best person to contact for this? Um, I can ask in the, the Gitter channel and see, I mean, we can contact the maintainers who are listed in either the repository update or um, area for that plugin or directly on GitHub and see if we can work with them to resolve it. I, I can do that. Hmm. I, think, I think Raihan is one of them, one of the Jenkins core maintainers. Um, hmm. I tried to check on GitHub, but GitHub's down. Oh, OK. It's, it's, the, end, it's the end of the world as we know it. Did you just say GitHub is down? Mm -hmm. It happened that would happen two weeks ago as well. Um, okay, so yeah, to me, to me, to me, the best way, I mean, one of the best way would be to first identify if we can fix a plugin, uh, and then if it's too painful to do that, because it's also it's also a sign that we are sending to the community, like, uh, we don't want to use the AC2 plugin because it's not really reliable, um, which is not been, not, I mean, yeah, if, if we can, yeah. I mean, if we can find, if we can fix it, that would be, I, way guess, I guess, if we can. If we can collect some logs and put them on a ticket and on the EC2 plugin and see if we can get some advice from them or, Are, or can areas where we can fix it. Are we mm. using the EC2 plugin for dynamic agents for Jenkins? Yes, yes. yes. on ci.jenkins.io. Since I mean, since this, since this is in Kubernetes, could we just maybe think about using the Kubernetes plugin to launch dynamic no. agents within the cluster? So uh, see, I've got a poor. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah. CI the Jenkins that is not running in Kubernetes right now. It's running on a bare metal and an Azure virtual machine. Um, team, team, prepare a shot to deploy CI the Jenkins that on Kubernetes. So, this is something that we could work on. Um, if we do this, so basically, what I would like to do is to deploy that Kubernetes cluster on the Amazon account, so we could have a second cluster just dedicated to CI the Jenkins that just, just in case everybody knows that the, the the Jenkins control plane doesn't have to reside in the inside Kubernetes. Yeah, I know, I know. No, but true. We, we we want a different cluster for it anyway because it's the CI. Um, okay. Because Pro, Pro public K eight currently has a whole bunch of secret information on there, and we yeah. wouldn't really want the CI cluster. Okay. Um, to go near it, I assume. No. Nope. Yeah. Um, okay. It's, it's, And, and once we've got that cluster, we may as well just put CI Jenkins IO on it so it can be maintained properly. Currently, it's just ma manually updated by Mark and Daniel mostly. Um, okay, I think we cover all the topic regarding um, CI Jenkins IO on Amazon. Um, the next one was is regarding archive Jenkins .org. Um So several months ago, we had to move that specific machine. So that machine was running on a rack space and and since uh, the Rackspace is sponsoring us again, I don't think this this is a I mean, big priority. So what I'm just what I, what I would just do here, 
um, I will just leave the, that machine there. And I will just deploy an additional mirror on Kubernetes because I already did most of the work there. So we just deploy archives.azure.jenkins.io, that's it. And um, I will just close that ticket. Um, another work that we started uh, working on was having agent for S390 uh, and PPC64. Um, I think the main blocker is still to to, autom to to configure those agent and to add those to see other junkies that are your right. Correct. Right? Yes, yeah. correct. They're they're running just fine for me in my test test environment. We just have to do the work to get them configured in the automation so that they'll be. Mm -hmm maintained correctly in the ci.jenkins.io as agents. Now, I understood from um, from Alex that we also have ARM64 capability now on ci.jenkins.io. Alex, is did I understand correctly? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, in a, they're EC2 agents, so they would have the same issues that we're having with the other EC2 agents. But yes, we do have ARM64 um, agents available. Great. So if I want to if I want to broaden the Git client plugin <coughs> testing and the Git plugin testing platform wise, that's a that's a good excuse for me to target. Thanks. Thanks very much. And it's I think it's labeled with uh, ARM sixty four as the label, and uh, I think that's that's the only label on there right now. Great. Um, next topic is regarding Fastly. So the now we now have a Fastly account. Uh, it's configured. <coughs> Working for plugins or Jenkins that are we made the configuration for Jenkins. That, so first for plugins or Jenkins that are you, um, it was really, really simple to put in place. Um, we also enable IPv6 uh, for plugins or Jenkins that are It was quite simple. The only thing we had to do was just to specify a specific C name that support IPv4 and IPv6. So yeah, that's the first website that um, we support on IPv6. Um, regarding Jenkins.io, we already made um, the configuration, so it's almost ready. Um, the only thing is, if we also want to have IPv6 for um, Jenkins.io, we have we cannot use the Apex domain. So we have to switch to www.jenkins.io. Um, I know that um, there are some configuration directly on the hand charts. Um, I'm not sure if they are also redirect directly in the website, like um, inside um, uh, Jenkins and Fresh uh, Jenkins that I use. This is something that I have to verify. But um, so yeah, unless unless you have any good reason to not switch to www um, to the subdomain, this is something that I would like to do in the coming days. For now, we will just use uh, the Fastly account for those two websites. So I would like to identify um, how much uh, we are using in the budget that we can use uh, per month um, before before I mean before putting more 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 more, yeah. more website there. What's the budget that we got in the end? We have <clears throat> one thousand per month. Okay. And so so, so the. Yeah. This the serious temptation to put a piece of mirrors or of updates is not viable in the thousand dollars. So so <clears throat> I mean it's tempted, I mean uh, I I would do something that I would like to do uh, maybe just a piece. Uh, I would just like to see how much we are spending in one month on plugins or Jenkins that are you and Jenkins that are you. Um, Another another option would also be to to pay uh, the extra credits, um, but if we want to do that, we have to to reduce uh, our bill on Azure. So it's like we have we have a we have a budget that um, we can I mean we have a budget that we can spend on the, the CDF part, and so right now we still have the the target to reduce our Azure um, bill, and so depending on how good we do uh, how how and how do and how good we are there, um, yeah maybe we can. Spend some money, some extra money, and fastly. Um, we are still also in the process <clears throat> to simplify the building of the infrastructure project. So um, we are. Um, I started discussing with Dan Lopez from the CDF to see how we can um, yeah, directly expense send the invoice to the CDF. So basically, what's happening for the Azure accounts right now? That's KK who is paying the bill and then has to be reimbursed for fastly. I ban my my credit card to the to the account. So we still have. Um, I mean, <coughs> we, we still have like. Um, multiple accounts where we have our own information, and we would like to to have everything linked to um, to, to to the CDF. So it's still a work in progress for now. 
I just had to put that on hold for the automated release. Uh, another, yes. I apologize. I've got to drop off. I've got to be in this next call. Thanks yep. very much. Yep. So just um, then, I would just uh, skip with the last uh, last point. Um, so regarding the sponsoring page, this is something that needs to be done. So a lot of things happen in the sponsoring area over the last few months, and so this is something that I have to to update on Jenkins that I use. Um, I would just probably put uh, small icons instead of just the name. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's something that I would like to work on this week. And I propose to stop the meeting here because yeah, we are already really late before the next meetup. So except if I mean, do you have anything that you want to to cover? No, I'm good. I'm good. It would be good if I could if you've got a minute or two sometime just to fix incrementals. Yeah, true. Yeah. Just put this. I think that definitely need to be fixed. Okay. Yep. Sounds, it I, sounds I, like I, Daniel wants a new user. Yeah, um, I saw, I saw, um, but I, I was too busy with the automated release last week, and I, I didn't want to to switch the context. So yeah, no. um, yep, I keep that in my head. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Sure. Have a good Thanks. day. Have a good day. Sure.